Welcome back. Thanks for joining me. If you're new here, hi, I'm Liv. I am a Colorado makeup artist and I love everything related to makeup and beauty. My job is to make you feel as beautiful on the outside as you are on the inside. I love trying new products, discussing makeup, and teaching all of the tips and tricks that I have learned throughout my own journey. And today we are just going to do a little bit of a recap. I thought it would be fun to go over my 2021 favorites. I just posted all of my 2022 favorites in my 2022 not interested and in fails products. So I figured why not do just a little bit of a recap. So today we're going to get ready with all of my 2021 favorites. Before we get started, I would love if you would hit that subscribe button. It means so much to me and we'll get going. So we're going to start with primer. I had four favorites in 2021. I'm looking off my computer screen, so that's why I'm looking that way. Um, the first was from First Aid Beauty. It was their Hello Fab Coconut Skin Smoothie Priming Moisturizer. I still really do enjoy that primer, but I don't have it with me. If you haven't noticed, my background's a little different. I'm actually at our ranch house, so I don't have all of my makeup. I tried to pack just kind of what I wanted and needed to use. So I don't have that one with me. The other one that I actually used all the way up and haven't repurchased is from e.l.f. and it is their Mint Melt Cooling Face Primer. That one is a really good dupe for the Milk Hydro Grip. I really enjoyed it. Obviously, I don't have it anymore because I used it all. And then the two primers we're going to use today, the first one is from Tarte. It is their Timeless Smoothing Primer. I still use this all the time. It's a really wonderful primer. The last primer that I put on my list can technically be a highlight as well, but I put it under primer because it is the Auric Glow Lust. I have the shade Morganite, and today we are going to use both of them. So starting with my Tarte, this is really good for smoothing out any pores, so I like to just place it in my more porous areas, on my nose, on my nose, my chin, and my forehead. And then the Auric Glow Less can be used like as under painting, kind of like an under highlight. So that's how I'm going to use it. I haven't really touched this product in a while <clears throat> just because it hasn't been a goal of mine to use it or I guess I've been okay without it pretty much. So I am just going to place it kind of in the high points of my face like an under painting highlight. This product is super natural though, so it works really well on brides as a natural highlight. Something that gives a little sheen, but not something like blinding. I have six foundations that were favorites last year. I think this year I only have three. So the first one was from Shiseido. It is their Synchro Skin Radiant Lifting Foundation. I did not bring that one with me because I knew I didn't want to use it. The next one is from Lawless. It is the their Conceal the Deal foundation. Another really good foundation. Didn't bring it with me. I knew which one I wanted to use out of the list. So I only brought two. Well, technically three, but I only brought two foundations because they were the two that I was most interested in reusing. Another one I did not bring is from Urban Decay. It's their Hydromaniac Tinted Glow Hydrator. Very good foundation. I definitely have used it on brides before. The Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Foundation. And that is one that I brought because this is the one I actually want to use. This is definitely a full coverage foundation. And today I felt like being full coverage because my past few vi videos, they have been pretty medium to light coverage. So I thought today would be a good option to do a full coverage foundation. The other one that I brought with me is from Beauty Blender. It is their Bounce Always on a Radiant Skin Tint. This is definitely a favorite. This one I actually need to repurchase. Like, I'm scraping the bottom on this one. And then the sixth foundation I brought, but it's actually downstairs, is my Tower 28 Sunny Days Tinted Sunscreen. I just used that in a recent video where I described natural versus no makeup makeup. So if you're interested in seeing how that particular foundation performs, go check out that video. I use it in the no makeup makeup portion. Since we're here, let's go ahead and jump into the Charlotte Tilbury foundation. It was probably a good idea to do a little bit of underpainting because this is full coverage. It's also looking a little yellow on me. It's been a while since I've used this foundation, but that's okay. 
I know this looks a little scary, so what I like to do is take whatever is left on my hand, I pick it up with my sponge, and then I will just blend everything in with my sponge. This helps get rid of any brush strokes. Your sponge will also help pick up any excess foundation, so if it's just sitting on top of it rather than melting into your skin, sponges are really good for that. And now we don't look so scary. 2021, I only had one concealer and I still love it to death. It is the Jouer Essential High Coverage Concealer. It's definitely my favorite and I haven't moved away from it. I've tried new concealers, but this is still my absolute go-to. I am definitely scraping the bottom of it. And I just figured out the Sephora near my home actually used to have a whole Jouer section in it. And just recently, that section has been turned into like a candle area. And I'm kind of disappointed because now I can't get this concealer in store. I can't just go to the store. I actually have to order it now. So normally I would powder, but I do have some cream products that made the list. So we're going to start with bronzers. Again, I didn't bring all of them, but the first one is my Gucci bronzer. I mean, this became a huge favorite last year and rightfully so. It's a really good product. We are going to use it today. The LYS No Limits Matte Bronzer was definitely a favorite of mine for a while. I have slowly transitioned out of it, so I didn't bring it with me today, but it's still a really nice warm bronzer. The Patrick Ta Cream Contour and Bronzing Powder Duo is definitely a favorite of mine. I recently hit pan in it, and I am super excited because that definitely means it is a well-loved product. Unfortunately though, I did not bring it with me because I wanted to use the Gucci powder bronzer. And then the cream options are from M Cosmetics. These are the So Soft bronzers. So we're definitely going to use those. And then I also put on the Charlotte Tilbury contour wand. I didn't bring it with me because mine got a little messy, like the packaging, I feel like kind of exploded. So it's really messy and it's not my favorite to use right now. But we are going to jump in to the M Cosmetics bronzers. So Terra is a more cool tone shade. And Summer is a bit more warm tone. So I'm going to dip into Terra first. I'm going to take my contour wand from Patrick Ta. This brush is wonderful. And I am going to just start tapping it into more so the hollows of my cheeks. And the nice thing about these bronzers is they blend out so, so easy. Now I'm going to dip into Summer and just lightly go above that. And the nice things about this bronzer, again, is if you go overboard, like I did over here, you just take your sponge, just go around the edges, and boom, fixed. But these two bronzers are super nice. There are two more shades that I need to add to my collection, but these are really, really nice, especially for more dry skin types. And then before we get to powder, I do, I am going to be using some cream blushes, so let's go over the blushes. M Cosmetics So Soft Blushes also made it into my favorites last year, which is why we're waiting, because I want to use these. The Melt Cosmetics Cream Blush Lights also made it onto my favorites last year. I didn't bring those ones with me because those are cream, obviously, and I wanted to use the M Cosmetic ones. And then the last blush is from NARS, and it's just their powder blush in the shade orgasm i obviously this is not a new blush it wasn't new last year either but it was new to me last year and i fell in love with it so the two shades i have in the m cosmetics formula are pearl tea which is a bit more neutral and lychee which is more of a bright pink and i just think it's fun to mix them into a really pretty shade i tend to like the lychee shade a little bit more so i'm going to start by applying pearl tea it's actually been a while since I've used this much cream product. Although they, they are favorites and out of the cream products that I have tried, they're definitely good products. I just don't typically reach for them as much. So it's fun to just give them another go. And then I just take my sponge and go around the edges. Make sure everything is blended. So again, if you have more dry skin type, these M Cosmetic formulas are super nice to use and really easy to use. But because I have oily skin, we definitely have to powder. So my favorites from 2021, sorry, I'm opening my package here, was the Givenchy. This is the Prisme Libre Loose Setting Powder, and I picked up the shade Satin Blanc. 
I went through a whole one of these, so this is why this one's brand new. And then the other powder that I really enjoyed is from Kosa's. This is the Cloud Set Powder. Definitely a well-loved powder for me, like it's almost flush. But I actually haven't used my Givenchy in a while. I have been using my Huda Beauty Easy Bake Powder. So I figured today we should dive back into Givenchy. To prove that I'm opening it, actually. And then the way I use it is I just like flip it over and shake it a little bit. So before I set my under eyes, I make sure that the creases are blended out. And then I use my puff. And because the Givenchy is tinted, like those quadrants aren't just translucent. Like the Satin Blanc one definitely has a lavender, a more peachy shade, kind of a yellowish shade, and then kind of a more orangey shade. But it just makes your face look so, so smooth. I use this powder to set everywhere. And I know it looks a little intense, but once it's actually blended in, it looks really nice. And I will take it over the bronzer and blush we used even to make sure that gets set too. So now I'm just taking my sponge and I'm just pressing over everywhere to make sure I'm picking up any excess powder. Now we're gonna dive into the Gucci bronzer. I didn't bronze my forehead, so I definitely wanna hit that area. I kind of forgot about that part when I was doing it. And then I'm also gonna use a little down my nose and a little under my chin. Sometimes that powder will kind of make your bronzer and blush underneath kind of disappear. So I was planning to use the Gucci bronzer to bring back the bronzer, the cream bronzer a bit, but I think it worked really well. Like I applied enough that I don't need to add any more right here. I am feeling like I do need a little bit more blush, so we're going to dive into the NARS now. And I feel like that just brought a little bit more pinkiness to it. This does have a little bit of a gold sheen through it. I had four favorite highlights last year and I actually brought all of them with me because I wasn't sure which one I wanted to use. The first one is from M Cosmetics. This is their Moonbeam highlight and this is actually, it's a cushion highlight. So it opens like that and then you press into it and then you get a really pretty glow. I've got the Nabla Skin Glazing. This is in the shade Ozone. This definitely was a favorite. It's still a very, very pretty highlight. I actually really enjoyed the Liss Pressed Highlighter. This is their Aim High Pressed Highlighter Powder in the shade Brave, which is a bit more champagne-y. This one did not get a lot of hype last year, but it was definitely one of my favorites. And then, of course, out of the Natasha Denona Glam Face Palette, this highlight definitely definitely was a favorite. Honestly, I'm kind of thinking I want to use this one. I haven't used it in a while, and I did actually just use the Nabla one recently and the LYS one recently. So I'm going to go ahead and place that on the high points of my cheeks. <sighs> so pretty. And then I like to take my sponge and press over it. That way it doesn't look like a streak on my cheek. So unfortunately for setting spray, I don't actually have either of the two that were my favorites, which was the Urban Decay All Nighter and the Milk Hydro Grip Set and Refresh Spray. I went through both of those last year and I just haven't repurchased them. So I'm just going to set it with the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Spray, which did make it into my favorites this year. And it's currently the only setting spray that I have. For eye primer, I am still using the same two from last year, which was the Urban Decay Eyeshadow Primer Potion and the Rare Beauty Eye Primer. I still really enjoy both of these. I still use both of them quite frequently. Today, I'm going to go into my Urban Decay. I feel like this one gives me a little bit more wear time. Because I do have hooded eyes, my eyes will crease pretty quickly, and both of these help with that, but the Urban Decay one just gives me a little bit longer before they crease. So for eyeshadow, I had a good handful of products. Number one being the Natasha Denona Glam Palette. I love the highlight in it, but I also really enjoyed the shades. As you can tell, the shimmer shades are probably my favorite out of this palette. The Morphe and Jaclyn Hill Divine Neutrals Palette definitely became a favorite. I am still using this. Definitely neutral. I know actually all of these are pretty neutral and that might seem a little boring, but that is totally my preference and what I thrive at. And then the Patrick Ta Major Dimension, the first one, was a favorite last year as well. Still use this darn near every single day. And then lastly, the Oryx Smoke Reflex. My favorite shades are in Temper and Defiance. I especially love the Defiance Topper 
Honestly, I've hit pan in that one. Like, I'm proud of this. That's how much it's loved. So I am actually going to start in my Patrick Ta palette. And I'm going to start by mixing these two shades. I just think they mix really well. They can be a really pretty all-over lid shade, or they can be a really pretty crease shade, or they can be a really pretty transition shade. They're just all good. Maybe we'll just use a mixture of all the palettes. So the Patrick Top palette does run a little warm. So I'm actually going to go into the Natasha one and use this shade, which is called Smoke. And I'm just going to deepen up the outer corner here. Sometimes these deeper brown shades can be a little intimidating, but I promise if you just start with small amounts, they blend very nicely and they won't be so intimidating. Then I think for the shimmer, we're going to go into the Jaclyn and Morphe palette and use the lightest one here. This is the shade Aw Lux, and I just use my finger to pick it up, and I'm going to place it on the inner portion. And then you're left with a super pretty shimmer. And then I'm just using that first brush we used to kind of blend it into those first two original shades. And then I'm going to use the second brush we used for the deeper shade to blend it into that color. And then if you want a little extra shimmer, we use the Oryx Smoke Reflex. As I mentioned, Defiance is my favorite shade. It's got a bit more gold to it, but I think today I want to use Temper, which has a little bit more pink to it. So I pick it up on my finger once again and just tap it wherever I want a little extra. It's not super noticeable on camera. I'm sorry. It's, it's a pretty light shade. And then for the lower lash line, I'm going to dip into those first two shades again from the Patrick Ta palette and just run them across the entire lower lash line. And then I am going to grab a little bit of that smoke shade from the Natasha Denona palette and just place that on the outer third and make sure I connect it to the top lash line out here. And then since we used the highlight out of this palette as well, I'm going to place a little bit on my inner corner. So from last year to this year, I am still in love with my Maybelline Sky High Mascara. That was my only favorite from 2021 out of mascaras. And then this year, I have been obsessed with my Kosa's Airbrow, which was actually a favorite last year as well. It was my only brow product favorite. So I'm going to go ahead and place my mascara and do my brows real quick, and then we'll come back to finish the... All right, so I had a lot of lipstick lip product favorites a lot but for lip liners my two favorite lip liners of 2021 were the buxom power line plumping lip liners and then i also really enjoyed the nabla close-up lip shapers and i have four of those i have the first four they're all like nude one nude two nude three nude four um, there are four more, I just don't have those shades. And then I'm going to go through every all of the lip products before we actually pick a lip because I'm not sure what I want to do yet. So giving myself some time to think. But for lipsticks, obviously the Charlotte Tilbury Matte Lipsticks. Two of my favorite shades are Bitch Perfect and Supermodel. And then of course I have Pillow Talk. I've got the original Pillow Talk and then the original or er, Pillow Talk Medium too. I've got some minis from MAC. These are just matte lipsticks as well. I've got Ruby Woo and Velvet Teddy staples in my collection. Milani released matte lipsticks last year as well. I currently have the bright pink one. This is in the shade Blossom. But I really enjoy the shade Tees. And there's another one in the more nude section that I also really enjoy. I just didn't bring those colors with me. And then from Tarte, I've got the Maracuja Juicy Lip. These were definitely favorites last year. Loved them, wore them all the time. They're super juicy, and I know now that Tarte has released like a plumping version of these, which is really popular. For lip gloss, the Ofra and Samantha March collaboration, I love these lip glosses. The clear one is in the shade Millie, which makes me really happy because my first dog, her name is Millie. So I just really enjoy these ones. They're good, they're good lip glosses too. Of course, Buxom, I have fallen so deep down this hole. I have so many of these shades and I really enjoy that they come out with new fall shades every year because I definitely buy them. These are really cool and they're plumping, which doesn't hurt my lips, but they're enjoyable. And then for the last lip gloss, Lawless Forget the Filler. Last year I got a little trio 
of minis, so the minis are what I've been working with. I don't use these a whole lot, but they are still very nice. And then finally for lip balm, I have two of the three of my favorites. The first one being Rare Beauty. Love this one to death. I have the shade Nearly Apricot and I'm really considering trying to get the other four shades. I think she released five shades of this lip balm. The lip balm that I didn't bring with me is from Summer Fridays and it's their Lip Butter Balm. I have three shades of it. Once it's on my computer desk, once it's on my nightstand, and one is in my beauty room. And none of the three ended up in my bag with me. But very good product. And then the last lip balm that I don't think I could live without is from Laneige. This is their lip treatment balm. It smells like coconuts. I use it every morning and every night and this is probably my fourth one. Because I don't think I can live without it. It is so good. So I definitely like to apply that during my skincare process. Kind of let it sit on my lips. I don't typically use that one during the makeup process. But all very good lip products, so now let's pick one. So for lip liner, I'm going to go with one of the Nablas. This is in nude number one. It's got a little more pink to it. That is just a really pretty color. I like that. And I think I'm actually going to use Pillow Talk today. So this right here is super, super pretty. So if you don't like a glossy lip, this is gorgeous. But I tend to like a glossy lip, especially when I've got like the extra glitter from the Auric um, Smoke Reflex. I really like to match that with my lips. So I'm going to add the Buxom Gloss. This is in the shade Cami Caramel. This was one of their holiday or fall releases too. And I love it because it's got a little pinky to it, but it's also got some golden flex to it. It's super pretty. So I know my lip lines are a little wonky. So something that I really like about the Buxom lip liners is that they've got a little brush on the end. So I just take the brush and clean up a little bit. And there, there we have it. Okay, so let's take down these tendrils. So I'm actually really impressed with this look. I think it would be stunning for a bride. Honestly, I'm gonna like mark down what I use so I remember how to do this look. But anyways, I hope you thought this was fun. I just wanted to do a little recap on 2021 because obviously there are some very good products here that I still use this year and I will still use next year. If any of these products or on your 2021 favorites list, or even if they made it onto this year, your 2022 favorites list, I would love to know which products made it onto your list because obviously they're my favorites. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. It helps me out so very much. Don't forget to ring the bell and hit all on your notifications. You'll be notified every time I post a video. I am here twice a week and I can't wait to see you next time. So in the meantime, be natural, be beautiful, and be you.